I have five tips that I think will make you a lot better big swim bait fisherman, whether you fish from the boat or from the bank. Starting with number one, find corresponding lures. I have seen over the years is that when certain techniques work, a swim bait will work as well. And what I mean by that is a number of years ago, I was fishing a Bassmaster Open event on Lake Norman down in North Carolina. Now I got on a really, really good floating worm bite. And a floating worm is one of my absolute favorite techniques to fish. But a buddy of mine was fishing that exact same tournament and he really should have probably won that tournament by fishing a glide bait in a lot of the exact same areas that I was fishing the floating worm. Unfortunately, he lost a lot of big fish during that tournament, but he really was catching bigger average fish than I was with the floating worm. And what I found out over the years is that anytime I get on a floating worm bite, there's also a big swim bait bite happening at the exact same time. It seems to me that those two techniques are corresponding techniques. They, they relate. And I've seen this like in a number of different lakes. So anytime that I get on that floating worm bite, I automatically will tie up a big swim bait and start casting it around. And I know that I'm going to get bit on that thing. The, another corresponding bait to that big swim bait is a chatter bait. I have done this a number of different times. Now there are situations to me where a chatter bait is more efficient, but a chatter bait and a big swim bait, anytime that I'm throwing a chatter bait, I can almost guarantee you that that swim bait will work in a lot of those situations. I've seen this just over the last couple of years. There's a lake near me that everybody fishes chatter baits on. Like a bladed jig, a chatter bait, everybody throws them on. I fish a tournament there and I'm like, I do not want to do what everybody else does. And I picked up actually a six inch mega bass mag draft, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about here in just a minute. I threw that around and I caught a lot of our fish that day on that bait behind guys that were fishing a chatter bait, right? It's a corresponding technique. So this may be different depending on where you live in the country, whether you live in the North, the South, wherever you live, there may be different corresponding lures that work at the same time with those big swim baits, but you really have to go out there and just kind of experiment. Now, before we get on to tip number two, a couple of weeks ago, I let you guys know about my now USA made fin fishing apparel. And I promise you guys that I'm gonna have two more colors coming and they are here. I have this kind of bluish camo color that I'm wearing right now. I also have a color pattern that I'm calling white fish and they are now live on the website and they are 25% off. So if you guys wanna try to get these things before Christmas, I would definitely try to buy them today. Also, this sale goes until December 31st. So even if you don't want them before Christmas, you can still purchase them. Them. I'm going to get them shipped out as soon as possible. Click those links down below in the description for fin fishing. Now, tip number two when it comes to fishing a big swim bait is keep your swim bait selection very, very simple. I will be the first person to tell you that I am not an, like a true expert when it comes to fishing big swim baits. There's a lot of guys, especially even on YouTube, that know way more about big glide baits than I do. But I feel that over the last five, six years, I have kept a couple of swim baits on the front deck of my boat, and I've been able to utilize them a lot to catch a lot of big fish, whether that's in tournaments or just out there having fun. And the one thing that I try to do is keep my swim bait selection simple. To me, there's only a few swim baits that I even fish. I'm gonna talk really quick about them and the gear that I choose to go with them because I don't like, the other thing that I don't love about some of these really big swim baits is that a lot of guys have to buy equipment specific for them. Now the the, the baits that I'm about to show you, the, the, the lures themselves, you can use a lot of the same bass gear that you probably own to throw them. Now the first one, is the mag draft, the mega bass mag draft swim bait. And I like the six inch version a lot. This bait to me is a fish catcher. If you have not fished swim baits, 
pick this bait up and just lock it in your hand for like an hour. And I can almost guarantee that you're going to start catching some fish on it. Cause to me, this bait gets a ton of bites, like a lot, a lot of bites. And I don't catch just big fish on this. I catch a lot of one pounders, two pounders. I mean, I was throwing this particular bait in my parents' pond that has no shad in it at all and catching the fire out of fish with it. It's a great little pond bait. It's a great big lake bait. And the Mega Bass Mag Draft to me, uh, like I said, you can keep it on your kind of typical bass gear. I like to throw it on a jig rod is basically what it is. This here is an Arc Tharp Series Moneymaker Rod. It's a seven foot, three inch, medium heavy power, fast action rod. To me, this is the perfect setup with this. I like 15 pound fluorocarbon. You could probably get away with 14. You could definitely get away with 16 or 17, but 15 to me is what I like with this bait. And the reason that I like 15 pound line, and this is something that I learned from Chris Saldane when he was with Mega Bass, is that 15 pound will give that bait a lot more action than fishing it on like 20 pound line. When you have 20 pound fluorocarbon, you have a lot of drag with that, that line coming through the, the water. And that drag is going to hinder the ability for that swim bait to move. And something that the mag draft does better than a lot of soft plastic swim baits out there is it has really good head movement. The head wobbles almost as much as the tail wobbles. And it looks so natural with that head movement in the water that that's why the bass can't resist this thing. So using that 15 pound fluorocarbon line to me is really a must. It gets a ton of bites and I've never had any issues breaking 15 pound. Now the big thing that is really important with this particular swim bait, and I did a full video on this, but I'm going to talk about it here again is using a little bit slower gear ratio reel not real slow what I like is a something in the six range the low sixes if you have like this is a 6.2 to 1 gear ratio reel that 6.2 6.3 the thing about this mag draft and and I'm, I'm not saying that this is a bad thing but if you fish it too slow the, the, the tail won't kick that great. If you fish it too fast, the bait will tend to roll. So you really kind of have to find a sweet spot. And the more that you fish this bait, the less that you think of kind of reeling it in that pace, because you will actually kind of feel the thump, 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 thump of this bait coming through the water. Now, the other swim bait that I'm going to highly suggest for you guys is the Spro KGB swim bait. This is kind of the Spro version of the really high price, like $250, $300 KGB swim bait. This one, I believe, rings in at $59. So it's a little bit pricey. It's not really that pricey when it comes to big swim baits. It's, it's pricey when it comes to lures. But this is like that mag draft. This is a fish catching bait. Like these things... I have caught a lot, a lot of fish with these baits. And I've, I've really, over pretty much the last year, when I pick up some sort of glide bait, I am picking up this exact bait right here. Like it, it just, it catches a lot of fish. Now the thing about the, the KGB, the Spro KGB, is this is what you call a chopping style glide bait. Um, you know, this is something that I learned from Ben Milliken. Like I, I'm always gonna give credit where credit is due. And this is something that he talks about a lot, right? Cause he's a really, I mean, he's an expert when it comes to, to big swim baits. This particular bait, you actually work pretty quick. Like it's a pop, 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 almost like a top water spook underneath the water, right? It's pop, 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 pop. And the fish absolutely love it worked that way. But I have found that you can slow this bait down. You don't necessarily have to pop, pop, pop it really, really fast all the time. You can work it a little bit more traditionally like a bigger glide bait that has a, a little bit more movement. Now these baits, they're not gonna have the huge side to side motion that you know a lot of those high price swim baits are gonna have, but it does have some good side to side motion. And this thing, man, it's just a fish catching machine. The other bait that I have thrown a little bit and I have suggested a lot on this channel is the Storm Arashi glide bait. This thing, I, I'm, I'm still going to suggest this bait from time to time. The thing that I have found with this bait is I tend to 
I don't always hook up the best with this bait. Where I seem like my hookup ratio is better with the, uh, our, the uh, Spro bait than the Storm bait. Now, I'm not saying that this is a bad bait and it's a definitely a cheaper, like you can find this one for 29 to 39 bucks online. And guys, I'm gonna leave a link for all my equipment down below in the description for you guys if you want. But those are the three baits, the, the Spro, the Storm, and the Mega Bass. Those are the only three that I keep on the front deck of my boat. Now, when it comes to the, um, the glide baits, I'm throwing this on kind of a flipping stick. This is a, uh, a, a Arc Invoker Pro rod. It's a medium heavy power and it's a seven foot six inch rod, but it bends a little bit further down the blank than most fast action rods, which is what this one is labeled at. And to me, that is what you want with these kind of glide baits. You want more of that moderate bending rod. Now, what I found is that this rod is probably a little underpowered for these particular swim baits. But again, I'm not, even though I've been doing this for a number of years, I'm still not always the one that wants to go out there, spend a ton of money for one particular lure. Um, and so I have used this particular setup a lot. It works really, really good for me. I, the, the only thing that's different is the reel. I, I throw this on either 20 or 25 pound fluorocarbon and the reel is a seven in the seven gear ratio. That's, that's what I have found to be the best, especially when it comes to that KGB where I'm kind of chop, 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 really working it pretty quick. Now, tip number three is pay close attention to cadence. And I think that cadence with these big swim baits is a lot like jerk bait fishing. I think that you can kind of dial in the right cadence that will help you to catch a lot more fish. Now, when it comes to like the Mega Bass Mag Draft, there's no real cadence here because you're not really working the bait. The big thing here is speed. And we kind of talked about this already. I really like to bring this thing at just kind of a medium, medium, slow pace. That is kind of what I do with this particular bait. I don't twitch it like at all. I've tried. I've tried a lot when I've had fish follow this bait. I've tried to twitch it. I've tried to kill it. I've tried to do a lot of things. And I, it doesn't seem like it's really ever done anything. Like I don't remember ever twitching this bait just right in a fish coming up and getting that bait. It just seems like this, this, the fish that hit this, when they hit it, they crush it. But the fish that hit it, they're just gonna hit it at kind of that medium to medium slow pace. Now, when it comes to the glide baits, this is where cadence becomes a little bit more important. And like a jerk bait, the big thing that I'm gonna say is don't get into doing the exact same thing. Don't get into doing uh, the exact same rhythm. You know, when I fish a jerk bait, a lot of times I, my rhythm that sometimes I get stuck in is doing a, a two pop, pause, one pop. So I'll go pop, pop, pause, pop, pause. And I will get into a rhythm of doing that. And I think that you will catch more fish by making that jerk bait erratic, by doing three pops here, one pop here, letting that bait sit, reeling it real quick. Though that to me is the exact same thing with these glide baits is what I like to do. So when I'm working this bait, I like to work it with the reel handle and I will pop that rod to make it go one way. I'll pop it again to make it go the other way and then I'll let it sit. Then I'll pop it once, pop it three times, then I'll pop it real quick, maybe four or five times. So I like to make this thing just erratic under, under the water. And the, big, the, the one big thing that I will say with this is that if you see a bass following a glide bait, which you see often. One thing that I have found to work is kind of a, a three or four hit pause. So I'll go bam, 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 real quick. So I guess that's four and then let that thing sit. So do, 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 real quick. And that bait goes bam, 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 bam. And then it pauses, bam. That's when the fish, I just said bam, like a hundred times right there. But anyways, that is a cadence. That is a little bit of a tip that I have found when fish are following that bait. Now, does it work every time? No, it doesn't. And if it did, that would be awesome, but it doesn't. But the thing with cadence, keep these baits erratic. Now, tip number four is actually the reason that I made this video today. And it's something that I've kind of more or less mentioned in other videos, but I just kind of want to pontificate about it for a minute because I want people to understand the big thing with swim baits is they're not always fish catchers, but they're almost always fish finders. You don't necessarily always go out there and catch fish with a big swim bait. 
There are a lot of situations out there on the water where I simply go out and just get fish to follow that bait. But when I get fish to follow it, I am locating fish. I am finding fish. I have done this a number of different times where I use a big swim bait to find the fish. I come back later in the day to that exact same fish and catch that fish on a different technique. Now, what that technique is, there's a lot of different things and it really depends on the situation. For example, Earlier this year, I fished a tournament on a lake and I found that there were some big largemouth on really deep stumps in like 17 and 18 foot of water. Now, what I did to locate these fish, instead of slowly working a bait through every single stump that I found, I would make one cast over that stump with the Spro KGB swim bait. And this thing sinks really, really slow. So it took forever to get down to that stump, but I would let that thing fall for a long time to get down to the stump and I would work it over the stump. And I use my mega live and a lot of times I would see a bass come out of that stump and come up to that bait. Now, I didn't catch many fish on it doing it that way, but later I, after I had marked all those stumps, I came back with a big worm and I was able to catch those fish, those exact same fish with that big worm. So that was a way that I was able to locate fish by using a swim bait. It was a tool for me that day. And I've done this in a number of situations. I've done this a lot with dock fishing. There's a lot of times where you can fish a dock, you will pull fish out from underneath that dock with the swim bait and you can be like, oh, that's a three pounder. That's a four pounder. That's a five pounder. And then you can come back later to that dock with a jig or a, a wacky rig and cast it up under there. And I'm not gonna say every time you're gonna catch that fish, but you'd be surprised at how many times you do catch that fish. So when you're out there fishing a swim bait like this, just realize that it is not always a fish catcher, but it's almost always some sort of fish finder. It's going to help you locate fish. You can go out there and catch later. Now the fifth tip and one of the most important tips that you can do when it comes to catching fish with that swim bait is keep the thing in your hand. If you are a boat fisherman like myself, I primarily fish out of a boat. I have kept these two rods on the front deck of my boat for years now. Like literally I don't take them off no matter the fishery that I go to, whether there's dirty water there or, or clean water, especially in clean water. But even in dirty water, I found that I can get a lot of fish to come up on swim baits. And whether you're again, finding those fish or actually catching those fish with that swim bait, keeping that thing on the front deck of your boat is simply going to force you to pick it up every now and then. Now, if you are a bank angler, the big thing that I'm going to say is just keep it with you. And, and if you can have a rod designated to keep it with you and, and, and like beside you all the time, then do that because the more that you fish this bait, the more you're going to feel confident with it. And the more fish you catch with it, the even more confident that you're going to be with it. And so that's the big thing that I can say is lock this bait in your hand. Now to me, if you are brand new to swim bait fishing, and I kind of said this already, I highly suggest the Mega Bass Mag Draft swim bait. And I did a full video kind of really detailing this specific bait, and I'm gonna leave it linked right here. So if you guys enjoyed this video, you wanna learn more about the Mega Bass Mag Draft, click that video right here. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.